also the fact that I said I was freshly 18, which is something a lot of people are mad about, when in reality, I was 18 and five months old. My bad. So ladies and gentlemen, it's been quite an eventful three weeks. And for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, let me remind you of the George Not Found and Catty Bug situation that has been unfolding. Because the backstory is equally as important before I get into exposing the lies that Catty Bugs is now possibly presenting in her stream that she did just two days ago. So here's the quick recap of what's happened so far. A streamer called Catty Bugs came out with a story in which she discussed how she was essayed by an individual at VidCon. We now obviously know that that individual is George Not Found. George then does his first stream responding to all the allegations. While some people then sided with George after this, a lot of people still criticized him of his behavior. We then jump forward to just a day later, where Casey then makes a long tweet, essentially breaking down George's points from his stream one by one. Then another retaliation occurs just four days later. George does his second stream in which he replied to all of Katie's response yet again. And then just two days ago, Katie came out with completely new allegations, seemingly out of nowhere, changing many details of the event, introducing many new details, and accusing George of a a lot more than just a hand under her waist as she first claimed. This has sent Twitter into a complete frenzy, as a fair number of people are now accusing Katie of lying about serious allegations in an attempt to tarnish George Not Found's reputation. But in order to review the events that have unfolded, let's take a look at the main moments of Katie's final stream. Here's the main clip that I want to address first. The one biggest thing that I want to clear up, it is fucking sexual assault, okay? I'm not going to apologize say that it isn't sexual assault, that I'm not a sexual assault victim. The touching that he has admitted, has admitted to many times, this touching that he admitted to not asking or getting my consent before he did, he felt up my tit on a couch with other people there. He stuck his hand up my shirt, under my bra, and felt up, fondled, whatever you want to say. He felt up my tit. Unwanted sexual touch is literally in the definition of sexual assault it's fucking sexual assault and i'm never gonna apologize for saying it is now this has developed a lot more and i'm gonna be honest and say it i think katie is genuinely lying now you're welcome to disagree with that opinion but the truth of the matter is we went from it being just a hand on her waist to this absurd jump and what's worst of all despite katie's own friend claiming that there was loads of proof none of it has been shown and i don't get why this new story account is suddenly appearing now when george literally said in his live stream that he had his hand on her waist katie didn't disagree with what george said at all but now she's come out and said no a lot more happened not just that but where was this whole story before and why wasn't it mentioned when she first came out from the very beginning katie's story has been made out to present george in a very malicious manner she constantly addressed herself as freshly 18 but the reality was she was 18 and six months my bad that's halfway into being 18 the word freshly has just been put there for the sake of making george look bad regardless of if she was 18 18 and one month 18 and six months the matter of the fact is that she was 18. She is an adult, an adult capable of making her own decisions, which apparently includes underage drinking, but that's not even close to where it ends, because there's more of Katie's story that has fallen apart. This screenshot is supposedly a message from George's own friend to Katie, at least that's what we thought at first, but during George's response stream, he phone called this friend to see what actually happened. So I reached out to my friend to talk to him about it, and it turns out that he actually didn't send this message. I'm gonna play a phone call that I had with him after I found this out, just because I think it gives more context. What's up? So there is a text that is claimed to be from you. Yeah, I didn't send that text. Um, I found out about it when you sent it to me. Um, but yeah, I know that, that wasn't me. I don't know where they got that from. I didn't ask them for any of their phone numbers or anything like that. And that's the first part of Katie's story that falls apart. So let's see what she said about this. I do, there is something I'm fully owning up to and, and clearing up right now. The screenshot, uh, that I, my recent response on Twitter, this is the only kind of like response thing I'm going to give, uh, I will acknowledge. That was a complete miscommunication. There's a screenshot I said was from his friend that wasn't there for the assault, mentioned our ages and acknowledged, you know. The situation was weird. It's a real screenshot. What I got wrong and what was miscommunicated was who it was from. It was actually from instead of the guy who left or wasn't there for the assault, it was from the girl who wasn't there for the assault. Um, which I acknowledge is frustrating that I got that wrong, and I didn't realize I got it wrong until after I posted it a long time, a, a 
long time after. And obviously when I don't come out and say, oh, I got that wrong, when he's the one to come out and say she got that wrong, it makes that into the biggest deal. So I just find it very, very strange. Now, while this isn't a big detail and will clear Katie and say that it was a genuine mistake, there's still many aspects of Katie's story that are falling apart. And now it just seems like a desperate attempt to ruin George's career. For example, until George mentioned that before any touching happened, him and Katie were on a couch cuddling for well over an hour beforehand. But Katie never mentioned this once. And in my opinion, that's a pretty big detail because how Katie made it seem in her response is as though George walked up to her and just started touching her up out of nowhere. The reality was she was cuddling with him for over an hour, play fighting with him, being touchy back, and so on. Body language plays a huge part here, and the fact that Katie left so many bits out, I think really shows her true intentions. To add to this, Katie and her friend Ghosty Fruit, who's also a streamer, have two stories that contradict with each other. Katie claims many times that she was drunk before she went to Dream's Hotel that night, but then you've got Katie's friend, who was with her when this happened, saying no, we weren't drunk before we went to Dreams Hotel. So how exactly are there two people who were both there together with two different stories? This is exactly what Ghosty Fruit wrote on Twitter. We were there two nights. The first night we were already drunk when we got there. The second night we didn't drink until we got there. So I honestly think she misspoke because there's no way any of us could have drank at the Insta party because one, some of us didn't get in and two, Katie wasn't 21. So who actually is telling the truth? Because I think your friend contradicting you when she was there with you on the night is a pretty big deal. A lot of people are also so skeptical over another aspect of Katie's response. Here, I'll roll the clip. For people saying take legal action, do you know the odds of winning an assault case? Like, there's a reason. There's a, one out of three girls are assaulted in their lives, okay? There's a reason so many of them don't come out about this. The system, you would like to believe that it's always for you. The amount of fucking injustice that happens with our system is insane. It's absolutely insane. And you sit here and see someone come out about their story and your immediate thing is, well, take it up with the law. Like that will serve any justice. Um, so fuck you. Um, and that totally makes zero sense to me. Just a day after Katie came forward with her allegations, her friend Ghosty Fruit said that we should all support Katie because there's loads of proof to back her. But no one has seen any proof over this entire situation. And if there was so much proof, why wouldn't she make it a legal case? This is a huge situation. If there was so much proof, it would be a relatively easy case to open. But I think the fact of the matter is, there is no proof. And it's just a bluff that Katie's friend is making so that we support Katie with her lies. Katie called George out for lying about things in his response and she claimed that she had called them out publicly on Twitter but nobody's going after him. Everyone seems to be attacking her. I will acknowledge that there are inconsistencies but when I have inconsistencies in my story and I address them and I acknowledge it, my whole story's out. It's in the trash and I'm seen as a liar for inconsistencies but when he has an inconsistency or when, you know, even the 21 Brisbane thing saying I had a band that said I was, you know, when he has an inconsistency and I prove it wrong, have video footage of it, it's still used against me to this day. His inconsistencies are taken as the holy fucking grail and as the truth, even when proved wrong. But I haven't seen anything being called out. I looked everywhere. Where was George ever called out? Where did George's story fail? From what I know, George has yet to be proven wrong. George's entire response consisted of actual evidence, genuine, visible proof, whereas Katie still has given nothing. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I am very curious what your guys' take is on all this. Please do comment down below. Honestly, tell me, who do you believe in this situation? Because from a perspective of someone who's provided more evidence and whose story has fallen through, I've got to say I side with George, and I will continue to do so, unless some insane evidence comes out against him, which, again, I highly doubt it will. Anyway, I think that's all for now. I'll keep you all updated as always. Subscribe to the channel to help me hit 9,000 subscribers. We're literally so close. Please do help out if this video was informative in any way. It takes just a second to subscribe, and I hope you all enjoyed this video. Stay safe, everyone, and peace out.